everyone. I'm Zach Harvey, co-founder of Lama Stu Bitcoin Ventures. This is our Bitcoin machine. So why do we need, with the digital currency, something so physical as a ATM style or a kiosk machine? First reason is cash. Only physical notes can bypass banks. As far as digital fiat is concerned, the only way to access them is via banks. If you use cash, you can bypass the banks. Decentralization of exchanges. As of today, we only have several online exchanges that we can use. They've all encountered difficulties. I think it would be very exciting to see these machines as grow as mushrooms all over the world and have decentralized access to converting cash to Bitcoin. Low setup costs. Unlike an online exchange, which could take months and months to set up and cost thousands or hundreds of thousand dollars, our machine will cost five, four thousand dollars. Anyone that um, obviously, depending on the regulatory regime, um, can set these up in their own region um, at a much lower cost than an online exchange. Convenience. So there's no registration for a Bitcoin machine. If you want to experience Bitcoin, you do not have to sign up to an online exchange. That can take sometimes up to 30 days. Our machine, you just walk up, put in cash, and get Bitcoin. And the lower one, ease of experience Bitcoin. So if you don't really know what Bitcoin is, and you want to get in without really having to go through all of the steps of an online exchange, our Bitcoin machine is the easiest way to do that. All you need is a note. You can start as low as um, one pound or five pounds, the lowest note of whatever denomination or currency you're using, and walk into a convenience store, scan your phone, download the app, which takes about a minute, and you can have Bitcoin within a matter of moments. So where? Where would these Bitcoin machines be? One option is developing nations. So we know of technology leaps. Technology leaps occur when a newer technology is a lot cheaper than an older technology, and it kind of supersedes. 70% of Kenyans now have access to mobile phones. Only a fraction of them had landline phones, or still do. And then there's the M-Pesa, which Pelle was talking about. He was talking about an even higher number than this. This may be an old stat, but 33% of Kenyans have access to M-Pesa payment system. It's already um, a system that works based on SMSing on a mobile phone. They have already made that technology leap that a lot of European or Western countries, US countries, haven't made of being able to pay with your smartphone. Not smartphone, sorry, with your mobile phone. So that's the first thing. SMS payments already exist. It's very easy for them to get into the idea of using their phone for payment processes. Global remittance. Right now, they can use M, M, M pesos to go to work in Nairobi and send back the money. The working members of the family can send back money to their villages. With a Bitcoin machine, they can work anywhere in the world, take their cash, put it into their machine, put in their uncle's address, and he has it immediately. High unbanked population. There are 2.5 billion people, adults, in the world without any bank accounts. With our machine, you don't need a bank account. It's very easy to access. All you need is cash. And again, the technology leap. What we expect to see is just as we saw in the technology leap of, going in, of jumping over the landlines for telephones and going to mobile phones, you can jump over to the technology leap, the old technology of a banking system, and just go straight to Bitcoin. It's a much cheaper infrastructure, and it's a lot easier to access. And developed nations. So we're already seeing that the banks don't seem to like Bitcoin. Um, especially there are certain instances, such in Canada and Israel, where they are actually blocking either in the, in the um, in Israel, they actually flagged Mt. Gox's account, and any individual that tried wiring money to Mt. Gox, they rejected. In Canada, they shut down the bank accounts, a lot of the exchanges. With our Bitcoin machine, that wouldn't happen. 
all, you don't need to have the bank's approval to start one of these Bitcoin machines. You only use cash. ATMs are already replacing bank branches. You have bank branches that are closing down and replacing them with smaller branches that only have ATMs. They are doing the hard work for the Bitcoin machines. Once people know that all they have to do is use a kiosk to do all their banking, what do they need the banks for? Bitcoin does everything that they would need to do. Retail stores can easily switch to Bitcoin. So if you have a cafe, doesn't want to accept cash, cash has the issues. If it's, you have to count it, it's easily stolen. Um, you, it, workers can always skim a bit off the top without you really knowing. And obviously credit cards, in the US alone, it's $100 billion worth of credit card fraud every year. There are chargebacks, there are high fees. If a coffee shop or a convenience store decide they want to use Bitcoin instead, having one of our machines in their store makes it a lot easier to make the, transact, to make the transfer to Bitcoin. And cashless society and cardless society. Cashless society moving back from cash by having these machines in certain retail um, areas and a cardless society. People will not have to use credit cards as much if they already have a digital payment system that does everything that credit cards can do, yet without the fraud. When do we expect to see this? We expect to start open, uh, opening up pre-orders sometime this month, probably in about two, three weeks. We're going to have our first development run of the Bitcoin machine um, by the end of August, and our first production run, which is fulfillment of the pre-orders um, this fall, September, October. 